Well, it seems like the disciples are beginning to catch on a little bit as they continue in the school of discipleship. We'll show you a little bit later how we really know that's where we're at. Jesus is really not just doing nice things here. These are not stories that Jesus carried out back in the day so that we could have nice Sunday school stories to talk about and to have artwork for now. These are real happenings, and they're recorded in this holy and inerrant word for a reason. It's not just for them. It's also for us to get a hold of this, of what's going on here. What are we supposed to be learning in this school of discipleship? So welcome back to class, those of you that were here last week. We had the feeding of the 5,000, and then like it, the, he made them get in the boat. I want you to go across the lake, and I want, you to, I want you to get in this boat and go over there. Do it now. It's not like, uh, what do you want to do? Oh, let's go. We want to get in the boat. No, he made them get in the boat. And he took a shortcut <laughs> by, by just walking across. But he did that with the intent that he was going to hook up with them in the midst of that storm. And that some things were going to happen with that. I believe that in this, and some of you have heard me use this as, as an example of how we can know, how we can truly know. So just how can we seek and find God's will? We can know his will. We can seek it. We can find it. As we move through life, as we allow ourselves to be open, and that's, where, that's the key thing, as we allow ourselves to be open to what God wants to do in us, with us, and through us, great things can happen when we are. So let's take a look at this. How can we do this? First of all, realize that God, and remember the God we worship is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the God three in one, and are with you. So <laughs> there are with, if you have read the shack, and if you've not read the shack, I would encourage you to get that book and read it. Because there are some great episodes, and there are some, a couple of episodes of Walking on the Water. And they're rather comical. One of them is, I believe there, I, Gene read that on our way to Estes Park and back. And I said, when you get to certain parts, I want you to read those parts because I want to laugh again. And we may talk about that a little bit later. But it is, it's a funny episode of Walking in the Water. And it's a, it captures the entire teaching that we're to catch. But we realize, first of all, we start with the reality that God is with us. You know, meanwhile, the disciples were troubled. They were far away from land, from strong wind that they had risen. And they were fighting, you know, heavy waves. And it was Jesus who came to them and reminded them, take courage, it is I. It's me. It's not a ghost out there in the water. It's me. And, and when he says that, that's ego a me. That's a Greek phrase that's exactly like the Hebrew phrase back when Moses is at the burning bush. And when he asked God, who do I tell him sent me? You, you tell him, I am sent you. Ego a me. I, this is God. This is the true God. This is the son of the true God speaking. This is not just a semblance of their imagination. This is not some kind of a represent. This is God. I am here with you. And in Psalm 46, we have that great passage, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. That God is with us. That God, the one true God. You see, we've just left kind of the plains of, of the lake here. We've been, we've watched these 5,000 plus people be feed, be fed. The disciples ended up cooperating with that. They, you know, they helped pass out all that food as Jesus multiplied those five loaves and two fish and multiplied that. And then they had to pick it up in those 12 basketfuls and all that. And things were, it was a nice tranquil setting. Jesus is teaching and preaching and healing and great things are going on. It's miracle of the feeding. It's wonderful. And it became pretty nice back there. You know, Peter had been with, the, with him all day. He had been with him as he fed those 5,000. But now that he's out here in the storm of life, so to speak, out here in the rough waters of life, it no longer feels quite as nice and quite as tranquil. And it's like, hello, now what are we going to do? 
and they have just forgotten in, in a little bit of what they had learned, as we will see. But first of all, we realize God's there. Secondly, we, we realize that, we, that we, we want to pray with. We want to pray with this one true God. And I use the word with as opposed to pray to. But I believe prayer is a two-way street. Not only are we praying to God, He is also listening to us. There is a relationship going on. He is listening. We need to always pray as though He is listening. And in the process of his listening, he is going to answer back somehow. It may not be this grandiose revelation that's going to be some kind of a drama in front of us or some kind of words on a wall but, or writing in the sky, which I sometimes have asked for. Just write it in the sky so I can see it, God. It, some, it just happens. And sometimes you ever find your mind drifting when you're praying. You find your mind getting off topic, off subject a little bit. I always tell everybody, and I tell them, pay attention to that <laughs> and write that down because that may be a redirection of, we're redirecting the prayer. And maybe God is changing what you're praying here or we putting something in your mind that maybe, or someone in your mind that you need to be, or maybe what you need to be thinking about. So there is a, a praying here. You see, when Peter says, Lord, save me, that's a prayer. You know, save me. When he says to Jesus, if you'll just tell me to come to you, I'll come. That's a prayer. Just tell me. I, and he's praying to Jesus to, to tell me, to give me a command, and, and I, I will do that. So we realize God's with us. We pray with the one true God. And number three, we ask for him to show you the way, and we trust him. Show, Lord, show me the way. And when we pray for that, then we trust that he's going to show us. I think when we pray without trusting, Jesus is just kind of, it, it's not, he's just standing there with his hands going, okay. But he's begging us, pleading, hoping, longing for us. Will you believe me? Will you be open to what I really want to do here with you? I really want to do this. But you're so close-minded you're so stuck that you're not letting me work with you. And he, he causes things sometimes to come into our lives to cause that to happen. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, just tell me to come to you on the water. You know, show me, show me. And then Peter is now trusting. Jeremiah says, a great passage in Jeremiah 29, you've heard it before, I'm sure. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Now, what, that, what that's really saying, what the prophet is saying, and what God is saying to the prophet, is I'm on your side. I desire the very best for you. I'm not against you. I am not your enemy. I desire the best. And I know you. I know where you are. I know how to find you. <laughs> and I'm always going to be in the stuff of your life. I'm going to be right there. That's what this is all talking about. You see, Prior to the storm, Jesus again had fed these 5,000 people. Everything was nice. And it's easy to trust God when we're kind of on the, the solid, dry ground and everything feels right and it works and, 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 and it all it fits in our system and our whole way of doing things. But when we get outside of that and we get into a whole new setting and nothing is the same, nothing sounds the same, it looks the same, feels the same, it's like, ha, ah, I can't do this. It's like, uh, uh, and it's kind of like my mother. I, I've never walked on water, but my mother convinced me, I, Junior, you're on pretty thin ice. <laughs> so I, 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 evidently, I walk on thin ice a lot. And she convinced me I did. You're on pretty thin ice. So, and sometimes we feel like that thin ice is just going to fall through. We just, and it, and it's, all is going to come apart. It was easy to trust God. You know, kind of when we have control and when everything's working and all that sort of thing, 
But out here in the middle of nowhere, out here in the midst of this where we look around and, you know, our world gets confined right to this little boat and, and to these other guys in this boat and all this water and in the midst of a storm at that, it's like, ha, huh, what am I going to do with this? You know, it's easy to sing a song, Oh, How I Love Jesus, in a hymn book. But it's hard to live life daily trusting Him. It's easy to trust God on dry ground and on Sundays when we're in church and all that kind of stuff. But it's hard to step out into the deep waters on Monday with crazy co-workers and family members that know us. And they know the dark secrets. They know us. They know kind of the dark side. You know, intimacy takes trust. Husbands and wives, the more we learn how to trust each other, that allows us to be open and honest and safe with each other. When we trust God, and we know that He trusts us, we know He does, and as we trust Him and allow ourselves to be open to Him and to open up with confession and joy and fears and doubts and hang-ups, and we just let Him have all that. He knows it anyway, but He loves it when we give it to Him. And He takes it and He absorbs it. As we trust that and we see how He is on our side and we see how He does love us. And how He is working for us and how He's enabling us and empowering us. As we see that little by little and we become more and more open, then intimacy happens. And that's what God is working, that's what Jesus is working on with the disciples. And a, a, a high level of intimacy, a high, high level of trust. And they're not there yet. They're just not there. It's easy to trust God on dry ground and all that sort of But intimacy takes kind of a mystery-driven worship into a mission-driven action. It does. Just, just saying, I love you, Jesus, is easy. But, but being the hands and the feet of Jesus is harder. God wants to radically change our perspective so that we can ultimately be closer to God. You know, are we changing our perspective or are we stuck in a routine and a rut in which we're in? You know, are we, are we allowing ourselves to be? I know many of you are. And I love walking with you through that. And I love having my vision expanded by your vision and your opportunity. It's incredible when we all work together on doing that. This congregation is such a gift to God because of how more and more open we become and how we do let ourselves get put in these boats and we're put out there into the deep. We do. And some of us rejoice in that. And those that aren't, I want to encourage you to be ready to get in the boat. Be ready to get in the boat of life. You know, that boat might lead you, you know, through the door of your work or through the door of the new school that you're going to be going to. It might lead you into your nursery with that newborn baby that's just come home. It might lead you into the kitchen where there's an argument happening and it's like, oh, no, not this again. I think I'll get out of this boat and go back on the safe shore and avoid this argument. You see how quickly it is to get into the deep water and into the storms of life and to forget. Sometimes we get in those situations, we... We kind of think we left God back at church or we left him somewhere in our Bible or our little nice cozy devotional booklet or on, you know, on the dashboard of our car where we put our Bible or the back part of the, the back shelf, window shelf. Ah, where, where is he when I need him? And he says, I'm right here. I'm right here. Number four, ask his help to help you see what he's showing you. So before we asked him, to show you the way and to trust him. And now, now we're asking him to help us to see what you're showing me. I don't think that's always easy. Lord, if you'll just, if you'll just ask, if you'll just tell me to come to you, if you'll just tell me, I'll come. Peter is getting a hold of something here. But this can be difficult. When we ask him, you know, Lord, show me the way to go. And then we're asking him to help us to see what that way is. To see, to see what you're showing me. I don't think that's always easy. That's, a, that's part of, Lord, help me to see this. 
Number five, be ready to receive his empowerment for what he's showing you to do. Be ready to receive that. Peter finally caught it. If you just tell me to come to you on the water, I will do it. I can do it. Peter caught it. If you follow this episode that follows the feeding of the 5,000 in Mark chapter 6, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to that. Mark chapter 6, it's page 997 in the Pew Bible. Page 997. And uh, in here, Jesus says, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. They missed it with the feeding of the fire. They didn't get it. So Jesus has them back, the remedial training in the school. The disciples, okay, we're going to stay at this, guys. Get in the boat. <laughs> they don't have a clue what's coming up. And, he's, and Peter was the only one who seemed to be getting close to getting it. Just tell me to come to you and I'll do it. Because Jesus never asked us to do anything that he doesn't enable us to do it. Let's try this out. Let me see how you're doing. Don't show your hands, but raise your hands in your heart. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry. Do not be anxious. I'm a little worried and anxious from the headlines. I'm, I'm a little worried about that. You know, I'm a little worried that we've been downgraded. I'm a little worried about what that means. I'm a little worried about whatever Bernanke, whatever his name is, is supposed to be telling us on Tuesday. And that Tuesday he's going to have this be. You know what? But Jesus says, do not worry and do not be anxious about what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear. Now, that's just one example. Love your enemies. Ha! 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 Forgive those who sin against you. How many times? As many times as necessary is the answer to that. Just go out and do that. So how are we doing with the commands of Jesus? You see what I'm saying? Jesus never asks us to do that, or he never guides us into the daily stuff of our lives. He never shows us a way to go. He never gives us these opportunities that open up to us by his hand, by his Holy Spirit that he doesn't so enable us to carry them out. That's what we need to get a hold of. Lord, if you're asking me to do it, I can do it. That's scary. That is scary. Our limited potential accents God's limitless power. Our uh, limited potential, uh, as inadequate as we feel, as little as we feel, as, 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 as impossible as this task may feel to us, this accents God's limitless power. In other words, the, the, the more we recognize how little we are, how little we have, and what little we have to offer when it comes to God, God, that's right where he wants us. But you know what I love to do is to take the little that you are, the little that you have, the little that you can bring, and let me take that and expand it and extend it. Let me take that. And Peter, come on. Come on. Come, come to me. And he did. And then finally, number six, be ready and open. Be ready, be open to learn and grow. And that, because that's what's happening. Today, God might be challenging you to step out, but you have to have the courage to walk on the water. Do you want to be like the other disciples, you know, that kind of got stuck in a boat and, and they were there? Or do we want to be the ones that stand up and be ready to step out? You know, do you want to be a boat potato or not? Or do you want to get close and get to God? God's calling us as individuals, as families, calling us as a church. Maybe if you're not a member of St. Andrew, whatever church you may be a member of, he might be calling you too. There are so many things God wants to do. He does them through us. That's the scary part. It's one thing, again, to listen to Jesus and see all this, to read all the stories and sing all the songs. But when he says, now I want you to go and you heal them, you feed them, you go to them and you teach them. It's like, uh huh, I thought you did all that. No, I do it through you. Oh, 
Show me the way, Lord. We have to choose to allow ourselves to hear Jesus calling us and to be involved with him. And my prayer for all of us is that those of us that are working on that, that we continue to be open to that, those who are still kind of sitting back in the back of the boat and just aren't ready to do that, I'm hoping that you're ready to get up and scoot up at least to the next seat <laughs> and, and kind of move a little forward in the boat. And so that when we get up to the front and Jesus says, come on, come on, come on into this part of life, come on into this calling, come. Lord Jesus, help us to be ready. Help us to hear your call and help us, Lord, to experience your enabling power. So, Lord, we're seeking your direction. We're seeking your will. Lord, help us to know that you're here with us. Help us to know that you're going to show us. And help us to see it when you show us. And when we see it, Lord, empower us to follow it. And, Lord, thank you for being with us. It's in your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.